Carlson. Uh, I haven't got a quotation for Carlson. I hope no, that's true. Uh, it's very difficult with Carlson to have more than one point of view. He's just an obnoxious character, isn't he? I will give you another point of view about Carlson at the end. But Carlson is there to show one aspect of masculinity. The violent, animal aspect that just wants to kill. He pretends to Candy that he's doing him a favour by killing his old, smelly, rheumatic dog. But actually, he wants to kill. My single one-word quotation to show that he wants to kill is going to be Luger. Luger is a German gun. At the time that Steinbeck is writing, it's associated with the First World War, and it's also associated with the build-up to the Second World War. And so that's a shorthand, a symbol. Carlson is automatically violent and evil. He's like a Nazi. Yeah, and Steinbeck does that just with that single image. <coughs> Normally, in America, he'd have a revolver. It would be a Colt 45. No. Steinbeck deliberately gives him the Luger to show what men, some men are actually like. Lenin. There's lots we could say about him. I'm going to give you one quotation. George was watching the door. <coughs> he said ominously, well, he'd better watch out for Lenny. Lenny ain't no fighter, but Lenny's strong and quick. And Lenny don't know no rules. He walked to the square table and sat down on one of the boxes. He gathered some of the cards together and shuffled. And so the most important bit for there is, for me, is this. Lenny don't know no rules. Because that gets to the heart of what society is for. We have to have rules in society. Otherwise, we just turn to our basic instincts. What would Carlson be like if there were no rules? Who, who would he actually kill? Lenny is the most innocent person you could ever get. But because he knows no rules, he's lethal. Look at what he does to Curly's hand. You know, imagine if that fight had happened, but he had Curly's neck. George would never have got him off in time. You know, Lenny is lethal, even though he's completely innocent. You couldn't imagine a more innocent person. He doesn't understand racism. He doesn't understand sex. He's got no idea about all the things that we understand so easily. He's completely innocent, and yet a complete killer. So, is Steinbeck suggesting that underneath it all, that's what men are like? Yeah, without rules, do we all turn to murder? If you've read Lord of the Flies, uh, you'll have a strong idea about this. You can argue, no, that's not what they're like. Or you can argue that is what they're like. George. Here's my quotation with George. I put God in it. Remember I said examiners aren't used to seeing that. If you look at this novel, it's full of references to hell, to Jesus, to God. It's a very religious novel. I'll show you how that works a bit later on. You could look at this as a prayer. God Almighty, he says to Lenny, if I was alone I could live so easy. The normal view of George, the normal view, is that he is, underneath it, a fundamentally good guy. He really respects Lenin. He's treated him badly in the past, and he regrets it. He apologises for getting angry with him after this. He says, I've been mean, ain't I? And so the safe thing to write is that although George has moved to violent language, he's given up violence, and he's got Lenin's best interests at heart. But, I want my A or an A star... So I'm going to look at that. What if this is actually a prayer? What if he's praying to be released from Lenny? Suddenly, that gives us a different way of looking at when he kills Lenny. Yes, it's for Lenny's old go own good, because Curly's going to torture him by shooting him in the gut. But, it also means he's free of Lenny forever. You know, at the end of the book, <coughs> has God answered George's prayers? That's something to think about. There's an A star in you thinking about that. Whichever answer you come up with. Curly. Well, there's so much that I could pick on here. Uh, I'm going to pick on that. You've seen that glove on his left hand. <coughs> it, the glove reminds us of his personality as a boxer. A 
again Steinbeck suggesting through so many of his male characters that men are essentially violent. And not just are they violent, that's how they sort out status between each other. It's through violence. When Curly tries to sort Slim out, he wants to go and beat him up. But Slim stands up to him and Curly has to stand down. Everything is sorted out through violence. Even the ending. George kills Lenin. It's a violent solution. What's inside the glove? A handful of Vaseline. <coughs> you know, so this is how a certain type of man treats women. His wife is only a sex object. That's all she is to him. You remember she's got no name. What's the difference between having a hand with Vaseline in, it, in the glove or telling everyone that's what you've got? Yeah, so suddenly, not only is she just there for his sexual pleasure, she's there to increase his status. His hand says to everyone, this is what I've got. You haven't got one, because your status is beneath mine. And so Steinbeck is also looking at how women are used in society. <coughs> All that comes from just that image there. I can talk about the role of men and the role of women. I love that because I've got a short quotation that allows me to write a lot about a little. You've seen what they've done to my dog tonight. That should say Candy, sorry. I'm going to focus on that with Candy because this is a method. Steinbeck uses the dog, the old dog that's going to be put out of its misery, to represent Candy. To represent how society treats old people. To represent how society treats the useless. Remember, Candy has lost his hand in a machine, and he's only being kept on for charity. <coughs> he knows he is going to get canned, and he'd rather be shot. It shows us the value of work to a man. Yes, yeah, so actually, I don't have to improve my status through violence. I can also improve my status by doing something worthwhile, by working. <coughs> Slim. I'll come back to the ending. I'm going to pick another quotation for Slim. There is the godlike bit again. George looked over at Slim and saw the calm, godlike eyes fastened on him. So Slim is a construct. Do you remember I used that word talking about um, Inspector Calls? Steinbeck has constructed him for a purpose. What does he want to show when he constructs Slim? <coughs> Slim has the power of life and death. He is the one who says, yes, it's okay to kill Candy's dog. He is the one who, when his uh, dog has too many puppies, he drowns four of them straight away. Without a second thought, because it gives the others a better chance of life. He is the one who says to George at the end, never you mind, a guy got to sometimes. Yeah, you just have to kill Lenny, that's just the way it is. On one hand, he is the ideal sort of man. <coughs> Completely fair. Doesn't let the emotion of the moment get in his way. He just makes a rational decision. So we could argue, Steinbeck says this is the way men should behave. On the other hand, because I want at least to be, alternatively, he could be showing even the best of men is still violent. <coughs> is still happy to kill. You know, that's in all of us. <coughs> if Steinbeck thinks that, I want my A star, I'm going to evaluate. Perhaps Steinbeck is suggesting <coughs> there is no hope for mankind <coughs> at all. Whatever rules we have in society, in the end, we'll always have violence, we'll always have killing, we'll always have murder, we'll always have war. We're all born with sin, and there's no escape from it. Look at it that way. <coughs> Crooks. This is an extraordinary thing. Crooks is black at a time when there is no civil rights movement in America. There aren't millions marching in the street listening to Martin <coughs> Luther King saying, I have a dream. That doesn't happen for nearly 30 years. So 30 years before people started to think, 
actually, maybe we should have a fairer society. Steinbeck is saying we should have a fairer society. How do we know that that's what he's doing? Well, if you took crooks out of the novel, <coughs> Lenny and George still have to come from weed. They still go to the ranch. Lenny still kills the puppy. Lenny still kills Curly's wife. George still kills Lenny. The story is the same. He doesn't need crooks for the story. He needs crooks for an idea. A big idea. And his big idea is, look, you white Americans who are reading this, have we got this wrong? Do we need to change our society, not just with the way they treat women, not just the way that poverty makes us violent, but look at the way we treat black people in our country. I've chosen a quotation, however, that doesn't just show crooks as a victim. Yes, I can get into my A grade by talking about how his crooked back symbolises racism on top of his shoulders and he's carrying the racism of this society around with him. I can talk about the fact that his barn is deliberately placed, his accommodation, next to the horses, next to the manure. That's how society treats him. I can do all that and get my A. But I want something that's going to give me an alternative. And so this quotation looks at the fact that he loves torturing Lenny. He isn't a wholly pleasant character. Well, why does Steinbeck do that? don't know. I'm going to make some reasons up. Perhaps he does it to say, look, we're all like this. We're all capable of evil. Black and white, the same. Or, perhaps he's doing it to say, look, this is what we've done to him. Because we've treated him in this way, because we treat our black society this way, it's natural that they will react against us when they can. You decide what you want to say, but the alternative view forces you into the A and the A star. Curly's wife. Uh, it's very easy to portray Curly's wife as a stupid girl, she's only about 16, who has made an appalling decision. And I've tried to show you that there are other ways of looking at that, given the value of women um, in this society. This is the final description of her. Curly's wife lay with a half covering of yellow hay, and the meanness and the plannings and the discontent and the ache for attention were all gone from her face. She was very pretty and simple, and her face was sweet and young. Now her <coughs> bruised cheeks and her reddened lips made her seem alive and sleeping very lightly. The curls, the tiny little sausages, were spread on the hay behind her head, and her lips were parted. You know, we get to the ending, and suddenly she's a child again. So perhaps Steinbeck is asking us to think, everything we saw before, was that produced by the way men treated her? Is that what made her mean? Everything we saw before makes us ask, is that how poverty has made her? You know, she dreams of being in pictures, doesn't she? She dreams of escape. Is that because she's had an incredibly poor life? The other thing it makes us do is look at her youth. What an end to a life that's so young. So at the ending, he asks us to sympathise with her. Why is that? Why does he want us to sympathise with her? He hasn't even allowed her a name before. Maybe he's trying to get us to think about how women are treated in this society. Yeah, how they're constantly judged. <coughs> Andy, when he sees her dead body, he says, you goddamn tart. He still blames her. Even when she's dead, it's like it was her fault. You know, and that's something that's still in our society today. Um, with rape cases, you'll see that mentioned often. Oh, she was asking for it. And that's the same idea that's here. This idea of blaming a woman just because she's a woman. Candy. Here we go. Oh, I got that quotation wrong. I said you goddamn tired. It's actually you goddamn tramp. You've done it, didn't you? I suppose you're glad. <coughs> Everybody knows you'd mess things up. Well, he's just given us this picture of 
Curly's wife. Is he doing this to condemn men and the way men look at it? Or is he doing it to criticise the older generation? Is it possible that in the future things would change? If you look at George, he agrees, doesn't he? There isn't a male in this whole novel who actually has any sympathy for, for Curly's wife. None of them at all. And so you could look at this as an attack against what it is to be a man. You know, it would be interesting if a male writer is actually doing that. You can look at the novel that way. 